Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky at the St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder. Why? Because every day we've covenanted to have some meaningful moments with the Master as we look at God's Word together. We're in a series this entire week on how to get your mind to mind. Because sometimes when we're going through a pandemic or a crisis, we think all kinds of crazy thoughts. And maybe that's where you have been. You've been thinking some crazy thoughts and are saying, this is, this is crazy. I'm not myself. That's because your mind is not minding, not obeying you. And you want your mind to mind. The word mind, when you say mind, your parents just say, you better mind me which means you better listen to me or obey, follow my instructions. You better be obedient. And you want your mind to not have a mind of its own. You want your mind to mind you. And Paul's giving us some principles in the Philippians chapter 4 on how to have good mental health. And here are the Christian principles. First of all, rejoice in your union with the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, that's what he's saying, because the Lord is with you. He, the Lord is with you. Two, he says, let your moderation be known unto men. The Lord is at hand. Practice the presence of the Lord. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Practice the presence of the Lord. Now, here's the third principle. And it's right there in Philippians chapter 4, chapter 4. We looked at verse 4, we've looked at verse 5, now look at verse 6. He says, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. So rejoice in the Lord. Uh, the Lord is at hand, practice the presence of the Lord. And since the Lord is at hand, don't worry. Don't worry about anything anything. Now, listen, that is not a suggestion. That is a command. God says, don't worry. And worry, of course, is anxiety about tomorrow. It is the belief that you will not have the resources to deal with what tomorrow is going to bring. And God is saying, don't worry, which means this is the day the Lord has made. Jesus was crucified between two thieves. He had a thief on the left and a thief on the right. He died between two thieves. And many of us are dying between two thieves. And those thieves are yesterday. Something we did yesterday that uh, we wish we had not done. And the guilt is killing us. So we're dying between the thief of yesterday are we dying between the thief of tomorrow? Anxiety, worry about how we're going to face life tomorrow. We play the what if game. What if I don't get well? What if I don't find a job? What if someone leaves me? And we worry about that. Many of us can't enjoy today because we're too busy worrying about tomorrow. God will give you a car right now, and it's, it's a nice car, and you're driving that nice car, but you don't enjoy that car because you're too busy worrying about how you're going to make next month's car payment. Look, just drive the car today, and the same God who gave it to you today will take care of you tomorrow. Now, you're not supposed to worry because you're supposed to worship, and you cannot worry and worship at the same time. They are mutually exclusive. When worry comes in the front door, worship leaves out the back. When, worry, when worship comes in the front door, worry leaves out the back. You can't do both at the same time. See, worry, watch this, enlarges your problem in your mind, and it reduces God's power in your mind. That's what worry is supposed to do, to enlarge the problem and reduce God's power. Worship, that's why worship is so important, uh, enlarges God. And because God has been enlarged, guess what happens to your problem? Your problems get smaller because you know that God is with you. Paul says, don't worry. And Paul is in alignment 
as he all whipped Jesus Christ, who also told us not to worry. And he gives us, Jesus gave us three quick reasons why we should not worry. First of all, worry is worthless. It is sitting in a rocking chair, rocking back and forth, but it doesn't get you anywhere. I mean, you, you've exerted a lot of energy rocking back and forth, rocking hard, but you're still the same place. And that's what worry is. Worry is a worthless activity. Matthew chapter 6, and verse 27, Jesus says, Can any of you live a, li a bit longer by worrying about it? In other words, it, it, worry can't lengthen your life, but worry can shorten your life. Now, when we worry, and it's, it's a worthless activity, um, we worry about the past. We worry about the future. Listen to me. Listen. You can't change the past. So why spend your time worrying about something? That's why it's worthless, that you cannot change. You cannot change the past. Once a bell has been rung, <laughs> you can't unring the bell. So you can't change the past. And you cannot control the future. You can't control the future. You can do your best to get ready for the future, but you can't control the future. And worry is worthless because worry won't change the past and worry won't control the future. But let me tell you something worry will do. It'll mess up your today. It will mess up your today. And right now, you're not enjoying today. You're not enjoying Wednesday because you're too busy worrying about Thursday. Deal with Wednesday. Jesus said, pray, give us this day our daily bread. God will give you just enough grace to get through today and then will give you another ample supply of grace to get to tomorrow when tomorrow comes. So worry is a worthless activity. Secondly, the reason why we don't have mental balance and we can't get our mind to mind is because we worry. And worry is not only a, a worthless activity, worry is a wasteful activity. Look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 30, 30, 30, 30, excuse me, verse 30. It says, it is God who clothes the wild grass. Grass that is here today and gone tomorrow, burned up in the oven. Won't he be all the more sure to clothe you what little faith you have? And that clothe you is in the future. God is saying, I got you. And if you look over your life, God has always had you. So many times, many of the things that we worry about don't happen. And if they do happen, they sometimes are not as bad as we expect. And even when they are bad, God gives us power and grace to get through it. God is not here to get us out of trouble. You're going to have some trouble. But God is here to get into the trouble with us. And when God is in the trouble with us, that's how we get through. Because worry is worthless. Can't change the past, can't control the future, just mess up today. Worry is wasteful. If God takes care of flowers and we're the summit and crown of God's creation, won't God take care of us? And then finally, and perhaps more importantly, worry is not only worthless and worry is not only wasteful, but worry is wicked. It is a sin to worry. In, in our mind, we have certain sins we consider to be felonies and certain sins we consider to be misdemeanors. <clears throat> From God's perspective, sin is sin. And worry is wicked. In fact, notice what the Bible says you're acting like when you worry. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. So do not start worrying, where will my food come from, or drink, or my clothes? Listen to verse 32. These are the things the pagans are always concerned about. People who don't know God worry about these things. Your Father in Heaven knows what knows that you need all these things. Because it's wicked because basically when you worry, this is what you're saying. You're saying to God, God, I don't trust you. God, 
you can't handle it. And it's an insult to God to do that. So instead of where we worship, you perhaps heard me or some other preacher talk about that clock who was ticking two times a tick, tick, two times a tick in, a, in a New England hallway. And it calculated how much ticking it was doing. And he says, if I'm ticking two ticks a second, well, that's 120 ticks a minute. That's over 1,000 ticks every hour. That's a million plus ticks a year. And he thought about all the ticking he had to do in the future. And he calculated it and thought about it and had a nervous breakdown. He went to a clock doctor and told the clock doctor, doctor, I've just had a mental breakdown. I'm so tired because I'm ticking so much and I got to tick a million plus ticks into the future. And the doctor said to the clock, well, how many ticks are you ticking a second? And he said, oh, just two ticks. He said, let me tell you what you do. You go back to that New England hallway. You stand there in that hallway as you always have done. And you tick your two ticks, tick tock a second. And don't worry about the next two ticks until you first have ticked the first two ticks. And then once you've ticked the first two ticks, then tick the next two ticks. In other words, just two ticks at a time. Or one day at a time. And living one day at a time and trusting, doing your best today and trusting God to make a way for you in the future is how you get your mind to mind. Now already, what have we seen? You want to get your mind to mind? Rejoice in the Lord always. I've got the Lord. How do you get your mind to mind? Always practice the presence of the Lord. Let your moderations be known unto men. The Lord is at hand. How do you get your mind to mind? Don't worry about anything. And I hope you can put a, a check by each of these truths that Paul's getting us on how to get our mind to mind. Check. I'm not worrying. Check. I'm practicing the presence of God. Check. I'm rejoicing in the Lord always. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, it's only when we live out your words and practice your word and incorporate your truth, the truth of your word into our life, that we find healing and wholeness. So I pray, O oh Lord, that somebody right now is saying in the name of Jesus, the, 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 the scriptures that is being shared will come off the page of the scriptures. It will jump off the pages of the Bible and it will leap into my mind and my heart as I practice your word. Bless your people, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much for being with us. Don't forget, uh, tonight we have Bible study. I'm in a series on the heart sayings of Jesus. They're hard not because they're hard to understand. They're hard because they're hard to practice. And we're going to talk about another hard saying of Jesus. I hope you'll be with us tonight. And uh, the pre-worship uh, uh, show, we have pre-worship show, and that starts at 630. And uh, so you come and join us for the pre-worship show. It's a talk show about what's going on uh, in our church and in our community. And then worship begins at 7 o'clock. Also, don't forget uh, that if you don't have a church home, you need a church home. Just like every bee flies with other bees in a hive to make honey. <clears throat> and uh, soldiers are in a platoon. You need your platoon. You need your hive. You need a church home. And I'd like to invite you to become a part of the St. Stephen Church as a part of our online campus, online. And you can be a digital disciple. Just contact us at info at sslive.org. God bless you. Uh, don't forget, we say it every day. Stay safe. Stay sane. And if you can. Stay at home. God bless you. See you tonight in Bible study.